Uh, this is number four from the uh, 2011 Calc A, B, and B, C exams. And um, what kind of problem is it? It's one of those where they give you a graph and you have to figure some stuff out about it. Um, so, let's see. Uh, this one's a little different from some of the others in that um, we're given a function g of x and it's defined to be 2x plus the integral from 0 to x of f of t dt. So it's an accumulation function, but... Um, it doesn't just have a constant kind of hanging on the outside. It has a little linear function for you. Um, so the first question is to find g of negative 3, which just direct substitution would tell us is this. Um, and what I like to do is if the upper bound is less than the lower bound, I switch it and change the sign. I just find it easier to work things out that way. Um, so what I need to do is I need to calculate the definite integral from negative 3 to 0. Um, but I'm told that's just a quarter of a circle, a circle that has a radius of 3. So uh, 9 pi would be the whole thing, and then 9 pi over 4 is the quarter. So this evaluates to negative 6 minus 9 pi over 4. And that's all there is to do for that part. Uh, the next thing is I need to find g prime of x, which is second fundamental theorem. I'm going to multiply by 1 here because the derivative of x is 1. Uh, it's a good idea to do that in case the upper bound is you know, sine of x or something in which case you're going to have to multiply by cosine, uh, which is the derivative of sine. Um, now I have to find g prime of negative 3, um, which is actually easier than finding g of negative 3. Uh, just go to the graph and you can see that at negative 3, um, f is 0. So we just get 2. And that's part A. And part B, uh, we need the uh, coordinate of the absolute maximum. Now generally speaking, I would do candidate sets on this, but um, I don't know, I, I think it's going to be difficult to do that because of the location of the critical point. Um, so what I'll do instead is I'll find the critical point and see if I can make a better argument. So I need uh, the derivative to be 0, or undefined, but the derivative is defined everywhere. Um, so I need this to be true, so I'm going to add that line to my graph. This is a pretty common new theme, it would seem, on the AP exam, adding little lines to uh, graphs and reasoning about it. Um, I know that that equation is uh, 3 minus 2x. So f of x equals negative 2 is the same as 3 minus 2x equals negative 2. And that gives me uh, 5 halves for my critical point. Now there's only one critical point, so if I can show that the derivative changes from positive to negative at that point, then the function must have an absolute max there. So I'm actually going to do that. So g prime of x is definitely greater than 0 in between uh, negative 4 and 5 halves. And you can see that on the graph because um, if you look, f is greater than negative 2. So as long as f is greater than negative 2 and g prime is 2 plus f of x, then um, g prime will be greater than 0. And by the same kind of argument, I know that g prime is less than 0 when x is between 5 halves and 3. And you can see that because now f is less than negative 2. So when I add 2 to it, I'll still be negative. Um, all right, so I've done that, and then I'm just going to summarize. Since g of x has uh, only the one critical point, and since g prime changes from positive to negative at that critical point, that means that uh, g of x must have its absolute maximum at the critical point. And the critical point is 5 halves. So that's how I would answer that question. Um, it's not the way I would typically answer it, I'd usually use the candidates test, but candidates test on that thing would have been kind of challenging. Um, so for the next part, I want to find where there are points of inflection. So g prime is 2 plus f of x, and I know that g prime is really just a vertical shift of f of x. And since that's the case, um, g prime will have a relative extrem of whatever type, um, wherever f of x does, so at the same x coordinates. Obviously, the y coordinates would just be two more. Um, so g prime has a relative max at x equals zero, and if that's the case, g of x must have a point of inflection at x equals zero. And that's pretty much the whole thing for that one. And then finally, we're asked something about average rate of change. If at this point you don't know that average rate of change is algebra 1 slope, uh, I don't know what you've been doing. But anyway, uh, average rate of change is just algebra 1 slope, so the average rate of change of f on the interval from negative 4 to 3 is f of 3 minus f of negative 4 over 3 minus negative 4. And 
if you look, you can just read those values off of the figure. Um, so that's negative 3 minus negative 1 over 7, which gives us negative 2 over 7. Um, and then we're asked about the uh, mean value theorem not being contradicted. Well, it's not contradicted because we know that uh, the mean value theorem says a function must be continuous on the closed, differentiable on the open, uh, and this is not differentiable at x equals 0, so the mean value theorem does not apply. Um, and that's the whole question. So uh, it did continue this new weird theme of adding lines to graphs, um, but still not very bad. Um, I hope you found this helpful. Good luck.